So much has been said about the life and career of Michael Jackson that it's become almost impossible to disentangle the man from the myth. Recent revelations are only the latest installments of a saga that began decades ago. From his drilling as a child star with the Jackson 5, to his rise as the king of pop and public scrutiny, we'll be examining the real story and fame phenomenon of an African-American icon who was destined to be the most talked about and examined figure in the world. Born in Gary, Indiana in 1958, Michael Joseph Jackson was the seventh of nine brothers and sisters. His father, Joseph Jackson, who had a reputation as a strict disciplinarian, organized a family band made up of his children, Jackie, Jermaine, Tito, and Marlon. In 1963, at the tender age of five, Michael joined the group. Joseph scheduled a strict regime for Michael and his brothers. Relentless hours of practice left very little time for normal childhood activities. In 1966, the brothers won a talent contest at the renowned Apollo Theater in New York's Harlem District, and within a year had supported Gladys Knight and the Piffs. Gladys recommended the group to Motown Records, and the Jackson Five were born although Diana Ross was widely credited for their discovery. Michael Jackson first entered a recording studio in 1967, just three months after his ninth birthday. By the age of 10, he became lead vocalist. A year later, he and his older brothers released their first single, I Want You Back. It became more than just a hit. It was an oral steamroller. It shot the number one in America, selling two million copies. Michael was just 11 years old. Jackson mania had arrived. Over a 10-month period, the quintet from Gary, Indiana created pop history with an incredible four consecutive number one hits. I Want You Back, ABC, The Love You Say, and I'll Be There. With the release of the horror movie Willard in 1971, Michael Jackson's career took on a whole new dimension. The title song, Ben, became a worldwide smash, giving Michael his first taste of solo success. By 1975, after 13 albums and countless top 10 hits, Motown and the Jackson 5 were to part company. With a fresh start at Epic Records and renamed simply The Jacksons, the journey was far from over. The hits just kept on coming. In 1977, Michael Jackson starred in a feature film, The Wiz, a remake of The Wizard of Oz featuring an all-African-American cast. Michael played a scarecrow, and his leading lady, Diana Ross, played Dorothy. Michael was introduced to Quincy Jones on the set, which led to Jones producing Jackson's first electrifying solo album, Off the Wall. The album went platinum, selling over 7 million copies, and catapulted Michael Jackson's solo career into orbit around the globe. Quincy Jones worked with Michael to produce his second solo album, the 1982 masterpiece, Thriller. It became a hit of colossal proportions, reaching number one in the United States and the United Kingdom simultaneously. It remained in the top 10 on the Billboard chart for an entire year. With an astonishing 65 million copies sold worldwide, the album cemented Michael Jackson's career as an American icon and universal superstar. An incredible seven of the nine songs on the album went on to be top 10 singles. 
Today, Thriller retains its title as the biggest selling album of all time. It's been in business 24 years now. I guess it was 14 when we first got together. Um, he's, he's squarely, he's the man of the 80s. Definitely. Maybe the 90s too. During the 1980s, Michael Jackson's fame had surpassed many of the world's leading political and religious figures. By the age of only 25, the New York Times summed him up as a musical phenomenon, stating that in the world of pop music, there is Michael Jackson and then there is everybody else. Four songs on the album Thriller were penned by Michael. Wanna Be Startin' Something, The Girl Is Mine with Paul McCartney, Beat It and Billie Jean. Unlike many artists, Michael did not write down his songs. Instead, he dictated the words into a tape machine and when recording would sing it from memory rather than read the words. Michael Jackson was to revolutionize music videos. The unique video for Thriller was unprecedented for its time with a duration of over 14 minutes, a huge cast and a massive budget. Director John Landis of Blues Brothers and American Werewolf in London fame teamed up with visual effects artist Rick Baker, who created prosthetics that rivaled those of the cinema. This combined with choreography as dazzling as Broadway resulted in a music video which became so popular that a documentary, The Making of Michael Jackson's Thriller, became the world's largest selling home video. Songs from Thriller, along with Michael Jackson's narrative, the E.T. Storybook earned him a phenomenal eight Grammy Awards in a single night, another pop music industry record. It was during the televised 25th anniversary of Motown in 1982 that Michael Jackson, wearing his signature white sequin glove, unveiled the now famous moonwalk for the first time. It sent the crowd wild and received phenomenal worldwide media coverage. The popular music channel MTV who in the past had been reluctant to give airtime to African-American artists, were now broadcasting Michael's videos on heavy rotation. By 1983, Michael Jackson was the most celebrated and influential pop star on the planet. He is one of the few artists who have been inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame twice. His awards include eight Guinness World Records, including one for Thriller as the world's best-selling album, 13 Grammy Awards, 13 number one singles in his solo career, and the sale of over 750 million albums worldwide. Michael was consequently honored with a star on Hollywood Boulevard. Michael received further accolade when he was presented with a Greatest Artist of the Decade Award by President Bush at the White House. Michael was looking for three males and a female, and um, so four of us went in together, and the four of us had worked together in studio situations before. We had auditioned for him, and we were videotaped, and he liked us. He's completely tuned into what he's doing, as well as being tuned into what you're doing behind him. And that's nice for a singer because um, he can appreciate what we do because it's what he does. And he has an ear for that, and, and if you do something that he likes, then he, he comments on it. And, you don't always get that with, with really big people. You know, he could be just tuned in what he's doing and then split, but he's not. You know, he knows exactly what's going on, and he appreciates what's making his show exactly what he saw in the very beginning. He doesn't want us to feel intimidated by him, you know, as musicians or dancers or singers. It's once we hit the stage or once we all hit the stage, the stage is ours, and we, he wants us to make it our own. There are times when we all get to go ahead and feel it, what we ever, whatever we're feeling inside, we get to portray it whatever it is, individually. The one thing that's so neat about him, he's got such an originality, and he does things that nobody does. I mean, it's his own style. On January the 27th, 1984, Michael and his four brothers were performing Billie Jean for a Pepsi Cola commercial when a bizarre firework accident during filming resulted in Michael suffering second degree burns to the head. Plastic surgery was required to restore his appearance.
By 1988, Michael was taking a hiatus between albums and living at his legendary vast estate, a 2,600-acre ranch in Santa Barbara, California. He called it Neverland, after the magical kingdom featured in J.M. Barrie's novel, Peter Pan. The ranch was maintained by 54 full-time staff. Neverland contained a private amusement park, plus a small zoo stocked with exotic animals. Michael's favorite pet was the famous Bubbles, his chimpanzee, who traveled everywhere with him and appeared in several of his videos. Michael was never short of visitors to his fairy tale theme park. Children, especially sick children, would be invited to spend the day there. In 1987, the album Bad was released, and along with it came a significantly different looking Michael Jackson. The 1988 Bad Tour was attended by Prince Charles and Princess Diana. Prior to taking the stage, Michael presented the Prince and Princess with a 300,000 pound check from the proceeds of his Wembley concerts for the Prince's Trust, a charity supporting disadvantaged children. Michael presented Princess Diana with two custom-made Bad World Tour jackets, one each for her young sons, Prince William and Prince Harry. suffered and dealt with the same kind of medical problem now afflicting my friend Michael Jackson. Because of that and because of our friendship, when Michael's doctor called to ask if I could help, I was glad to intervene. I traveled to Mexico City where I saw for myself that Michael was in desperate need of specialized medical attention. Because of my own experience with addiction to prescription medicines, I was able to make a number of calls in search of the best and most appropriate treatment for Michael. And he is now undergoing such treatment in Europe. I will only repeat that I am a friend of Michael Jackson's and I love him like a son and I support him with all my heart. During the 1980s, at the peak of his career, Michael Jackson was the most famous man on the planet. 
the sex symbol known for wearing fetish outfits and grabbing his crotch on stage. By the end of the 1980s, Michael was crowned Artist of the Decade. Post-millennium, he became the object of ridicule and scorn. Hounded by the press and by the courts, the victim of as many as 50 new lawsuits a year. The bizarre tabloid rumors became rampant as Michael's fame grew. It was alleged that he had paid a vast sum for the bones of John Merrick, the Elephant Man, and that to maintain his high-pitched voice, he was taking hormone treatments. Increasingly outlandish headlines claimed that to keep his youthful appearance, he slept in a hyperbaric chamber. When it was reported that Michael bleached his skin to make him appear whiter, some felt that he was denying his ancestral past. Michael later revealed that he suffered from the skin disorder, vitiligo, which affects the skin's pigmentation, resulting in the appearance of large white blotches. With the release of the album Dangerous in 1991, and even with its estimated global sales of 30 million copies, rumors became rife that Sony was dissatisfied with record sales, and Michael was not living up to the record company's high expectations. Dangerous featured the song Heal the World, which in 1995 would become the title of Michael's charity. By 1995, Michael had finished his latest album, History which controversially contained new material mixed with Ode and also featured a duet with his sister, Janet. History is supposed to be a greatest hits, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it will be. So, um, so uh, I don't know if it'll be on the album or not. That's why I don't talk about it that much, but uh, I like the song. Okay. It, it was fun. <laughs> Singles from History received great acclaim. The album was never really welcomed with the enthusiasm of Michael's previous records, and Michael was criticized for being unable to come up with anything new. In 1993 brought the first bombshell. Rumors about Michael and his friendships with children began to surface. The world held its breath as the king of pop denied accusations of child abuse at his Neverland Ranch in Santa Barbara. Michael went public with his denial of inappropriate relationships with any child and settled out of court with a family for a reputed $20 million. This was the start of a chain of events that would ultimately damage Michael's career in a profound way. Now, if, if this really went on, do you think a father would accept money, that that would make it okay, that that would make everything all right? I mean, it's, it's, it doesn't make any sense. I know that if that were my son, I'm sorry. I don't care if you gave me a billion dollars. I want to see you either behind bars or dead for the rest of your life for doing that to my son or my daughter. It, it's crazy. The guy was after money is what he wanted. It was during this time that a highly scrutinized marriage took place to Lisa Marie Presley, whose father was one of the few men who could rival Michael's worldwide fame. Despite media speculation about the credibility of the relationship, Lisa Marie and Michael publicly denounced rumors and declared their love was genuine. 
The marriage was short-lived and ended on amicable terms in 1996. Within a year of the separation, Michael's association with his dermatologist assistant, Deborah Rowe, led to an announcement that she was pregnant with his first child. Soon after this, the couple was married in Australia. Deborah gave birth to a son, Prince Michael Jackson Jr., followed by a daughter, Paris Michael Catherine. Despite having two children together, the relationship was not to last. By autumn 1999, the couple announced their intention to divorce, with full custody of the children going to Michael. In 2002, Michael announced the birth of another son, Prince Michael II. To this day, the mother's name remains a mystery. In 2002, Michael Jackson released the album Invincible. It was a financial disaster, selling only 2 million copies in the U.S. And after an association that spanned over 20 years, Sony failed to renew its contract with Michael. The king of pop was losing popularity. We were already off the wall. And we coming off our seats to stand up for justice in the music industry. This is very important because throughout the years, black artists have been taken advantage of completely. And it's time now that we have to put a stop to this incredible, incredible injustice. And uh, like uh, Mrs. Sharpton was saying, people from James Brown to Sammy Davis Jr., some of the real pioneers that, uh, that inspired me to be the entertainer that I am. These artists are always on tour because if they stop touring, they would totally go broken. And uh, it's been, the record companies really, really do conspire against their artists. They steal, they cheat, they do whatever they can, especially the black artists. Sony Tommy Mottola. Tommy Mottola is the president of the record division. He is a mean, he's a racist, and he's very, very, very devilish. There has been much speculation regarding Michael's treatment of his children. An incident in 2002 which was circulated around the world, showed Michael holding his baby over a Berlin hotel balcony for his chanting fans to see. It created an uproar. Peace family. Peace family. Those close to Michael have always insisted that he was a responsible parent and highly protective of his children. Claims of Michael sharing his bed with his pet chimp, Bubbles, fueled hysteria. More outrageous tales began to surface when Michael's sister LaToya launched her own musical career and claims circulated of Michael and LaToya being one and the same person. Michael's dramatic change in appearance prompted speculation that he was attempting to look like his friend, Diana Ross. It's been said that Michael Jackson underwent plastic surgery to make himself look more like you. I don't think so. Is that true? No, I, well, I don't think he has. No one's ever told me. He's never told me that. I don't think so. But is it unnerving for you to have a young man that's uh, undergone plastic surgery to make himself look like you? Well, I don't think he's trying to look like me. I really don't. I think he wants to look like what he perceives as makes him feel happy about himself, you know? I don't think he's trying to look like me. I do think he's quite beautiful, though, by the way. You know what the media is like. It's called propaganda. They take anything and they blow it out. We're family. You saw the way we grew up in the two-bedroom house. Family is more important than all the success in anything, and we're always going to hold on to, to that. Their whole thing is to divide and conquer and to separate us. We're family. 
We're family, we have children. We hurt just like everyone else. I'm constantly upset by what people say, and there are many things said about me that are unkind that I don't find pleasurable. But people, so many people really don't know him, and they don't give him a chance, and they're so ready to criticize. And I think what happens is when you see genius, and when you see a talent that is just unstoppable and untouchable, the first reaction people have is to criticize it because it scares them, it threatens them, and it sort of, it, um, in order to augment their own self-worth, they feel that they have to belittle him. Throughout all of this, Michael continued to be adored by his legions of fans. Appreciate my art. I'm very honored. Well, he's my clo one of my closest friends, and we know more about each other probably than uh, any two people. And I love him, and he loves me. Two thousand three brought headlines that shook the world and stunned his fans. Nine separate charges of child molestation were brought against Michael, and this time he was to appear in court under the scrutiny of the world press. A furious flurry of claims and denials and counter allegations followed. Everyone had opinions about the testimony and the witnesses as the drama was played out in the small town of Santa Maria in California. Please keep an open mind and let me have my day in court. I deserve a fair trial like every other American citizen. I will be acquitted and vindicated when the truth is told. I'd like to let the world know that I'm behind my son. I don't believe any of this stuff that's being written about him because I raised him and I know him and that's just a statement people are making. We support our brother wholeheartedly and um, um, we stand by, by his side and there is we're in the process of planning a trip with the whole family to, to visit him. The case was dubbed the trial of the century and gained global notoriety, not only because of Jackson's fame, but also because of the antics outside of the courtroom. When the trial began, hordes of Michael's supporters held a vigil for their hero outside the courthouse. When Michael arrived at court, he jumped on top of his SUV and began dancing. After two months, 85 witnesses and 500 pieces of evidence, the prosecution rested its case against Michael Jackson. On June the 13th, 2005, Michael was found not guilty and completely cleared of all charges. His fans wildly celebrated his acquittal. I would like to thank the fans around the world. I would like to thank the fans around the world for your love and your support from every corner of the earth. My family has been very supportive. My brother Randy, who's been incredible. I want to thank the community of Santa Maria. I, I want you to know that I, I love the community of Santa Maria very much. It's my community. I love the people. I will always love the people. My children were born in this community. My home is in this community. I will always love this community from the bottom of my heart. That's why I moved here. Thank you very much. Long after the headlines died, thousands of celebrity watchers and pop music fans continued their obsession with this charismatic star. 
After restless but reclusive wanderings in Bahrain, Ireland, England, and France, where would Michael go next? It's my pleasure. It is my honor to be here in South Africa. I love you people very much. I've had the time of my life here. I've had so much fun. I hate to leave. And I'm definitely looking for a, a home here, Dubai, because I would love to spend uh, the rest of my life here. And we are definitely coming in January. And this is a wonderful, lovely man. And I love Nelson Mandela very much. And thank you for all your hospitality and all your love. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Michael Jackson and Uri Geller to the pitch of Exodus City Football Club. Yeah. Tell him about gravity knows more about Guy Fox than probably. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Guy Fox? Well, what the House of the Parliament. He certainly did. But why is that celebration? Well, we celebrate the fact that he didn't succeed. Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll All see you. Right, everybody. You Thank you. Pardon? What are you waiting to see here? Gee, I don't know. I haven't been in yet. Mike, <laughs> well, do you like football? Are you looking forward to seeing next I know nothing about it. You know, but he's doing it for me. Like, yeah. <laughs> you mean soccer? Yeah. I'm sorry, I don't know anything about it. Throughout his life, Michael Jackson always found time to dedicate himself to a vast array of charitable organizations. Are we blind to the fact that our children are raging against the indifference, crying out against the abandonment, of thundering against the neglect? Heal the Kids is about doing something about making a difference in trying to help adults and parents realize that it is our power to change the world that our children live in. Michael, it's now my great pleasure to present you with a check for one million dollars. This represents the money Pepsi-Cola pledges to raise in Europe this summer with our best wishes for Heal the World. of 10 concerts here is certainly a coup for the O2 Arena and if those concerts go well the expectation is that he'll add many more dates but questions still remain about whether the Michael Jackson of today can still cut it live on such a big stage. It's a staggering show that's what Michael Jackson does and so therefore you're talking about absolute the the top of, our, of energy and he has to be you know almost plugged into glucose because that's the only way he's going to get through it. And I pulled him aside and said, Mikey, why now? Okay, and he said to me, he said, because you know what? My kids are old enough and I'm still young enough to do what I do. I don't want them to see me, you know, in my prime when I, when I do a living. Because they've never seen me before. all these dates we think do you think he's going to be able to cope with this do you think he's passed it or he'll still be able to give a good performance tina turner can do it at 70 michael jackson can do it at 50. everyone's just going to be glad to see him back on stage um, more so than anything else i mean is he going to be as great as he was back then who knows but he's going to be still michael jackson at the end of the day um, I don't think he has to prove anything to pull it off. I mean, he's a legend he is. I mean, Michael Jackson's going to turn up and do his shows, and um, everybody will see that, you know, the next chapter. He is the single greatest entertainer of all time, and 
if he's back and if he's as, anywhere near as good as he used to be, it'll be great. I know he can pull it off. I've got so much faith in him. I know me and the fans, we've got, we got you know, so much energy and I know he can do it, most definitely. It was definitely worth it. When you're looking forward to something, you don't really suffer. Like we had rain, our tent got flooded, but just because we knew that we were going to see Michael, none of that stuff matters. We're here for Michael, we'll do anything. As soon as I could get here, I got here, and even though I came here, there were still so about 16 people in front of me that have been here since Tuesday. <laughs> we came from the west of Ireland yesterday, or on Wednesday morning, and we've been queuing since. It was so hard to get the tickets, so I just thought I just took the risk and just come down here and spend the night, and I just don't care. Absolutely love him. There's nothing on this earth that would stop me getting to this oh, concert. She does love him. Just he's really, really good. Yeah, yes. he's the best singer in the world. I love my, he's my future husband as well. Yes. I'm gonna marry him one day. to see him in a couple of hours. Are you going to be able to cope? I can't. I'll be on the floor. Michael! 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 The singer Michael Jackson is reported to have died from a heart attack. He collapsed at his home in Los Angeles about three hours ago. He was not breathing when paramedics arrived. They performed heart massage. And then they took him to the UCLA Medical Centre in the city, where he's said to have gone into a deep coma. His family are at the hospital. The Los Angeles Times say he was pronounced dead a short time ago, quoting law enforcement sources. The man was in pain and there was no question about it. He needed to have certain medications, but the problem becomes the overuse of medications. And that's something which people, I think all people find very difficult to control. He simply wasn't able to control it. It was later learned that he died from cardiac arrest. Just the night before he died, Jackson was here at the Staples Centre in LA, rehearsing for his upcoming London shows. And by all accounts, it was a pretty energetic performance, running through 10 or 11 songs and dances. After which, Jackson's manager says the singer came up and put his arm around him and told him, I am so happy. This is really our time. At these rather less glamorous studios, Jackson had a tough schedule for the last few months. People here who watched him rehearse said he was thin and frail, but he seemed fit. He was, you know, up to par. He was at his best and he was ready to, um, to come back and just wow us all away. This has been the Jackson family home ever since they moved to Los Angeles from small town Indiana back in the spring of 1971. It's here that plans were made and successes were celebrated. Now, of course, it's a place of mourning for his immediate family all of whom survive him.
unless you are a fan of Michael Jackson in the way that so many millions of people are, and the way that I am, you, you can't begin to understand the loss that we're feeling. <laughs> I'm just in shock. There is no more King of Pop and it will only just sort of live through his music. Yeah. I've just been like shaking and my heart's still pounding and I can't like comprehend that he's actually gone and it's a huge loss. I grew up with him, you know, that's why he's such a huge part of my life is because, you know, he's always been there. He meant a lot to me. I've been a Michael Jackson fan ever since 1969, but those records were so good and they will live with me for the rest of my life. Let's remember the silver gloves. Let's remember those video clips. Let's remember that, that this guy, although troubled in his private life, really did inspire two generations of young performers. On the 7th of July, 2009, a public memorial service in honor of Michael Jackson was held at the Staples Center in Los Angeles, California. like it honored his life and what he stood for and what he meant to everyone. To me he's a renaissance artist because he did so many things so brilliantly well. Uh, not just about a singer and a dancer but a songwriter and a producer. His vision, the videos, all of those things just made him the unique individual that he was. shock. I cried throughout the ceremony. That's why I'm wearing my glasses. But everybody was crying anyway. But um, I'm still in shock. Even in death, Michael Jackson, perhaps more than any other icon in the history of popular music, remains a subject of heated debate. But one fact will forever remain undisputed. His extraordinary talent for creating truly original music, loved by millions.
Despite setbacks that would have ended careers of lesser men, Michael Jackson's legions of fans remain as loyal today as they have ever been. His accomplishments as the king of pop will forever remain some of the most impressive in music history. I love you people very much. I've had the time of my life.